Can you imagine what the web would be without images and web pages? That's kind of hard to believe, but at one time, basically, that's what we had. But that's a long time ago. So now, how do we get images and other media into our pages? Fortunately, WordPress makes that pretty easy to do. Before we actually do any of that, let's just take a look at where all those images are stored. And it's all kept in a media library. So I'm just going to click on the media library over here in my WP admin. And you can see I have this grid view layout of all the images and videos that I've already uploaded before I started. I don't really like this grid view. It doesn't really do much for me. I think a little bit more common look is by having this list view over here because it gives you more information. And if you want to like look at an image in more detail, maybe you can just click on the name. By the way, I, I would also change the name of these, you know, this generic image file name. I think it's a better idea to name what this image is. You can do that. You can also add alternative text over here. That alternative text, you'll see there's a number of places where you can add the alternative text. It's for accessibility purposes. No website is accessible unless it at least has alternative text, which is used to describe the image for people who use screen readers. That information is read out loud. So that's about it for the media library. Now I could explore lots more, but it's just important for right now that you know that everything that you upload to your website is going to be stored here. Okay, let's actually use the image block. So I've already started a post called image block. And, you know, how do you get this going? Well, there's a couple of ways to get the image block started. One way is just to click on this over here. This is called the block inserter. And if you click on this, all the blocks that are available to you are listed over here. And you can see these little previews on the right-hand side here. I don't find them particularly helpful, but okay. And I've scrolled past what I want, which is the image block. And if I click on it, it just appears in my page. If I go back here and start again, and I find the image block... I could also drag and drop, which might be very handy, especially if you have a lot of text in here. There we go. You can sort of see that line where, where it's going to go. Perfect. That's one way, or actually two slightly different ways of the same thing, just getting it in. Another way to do it, and I think one that's a little more handy and a little faster, especially if you know the name of the block, and in this case I do, is just to type in the slash. And... Now, I would type in the word image, but WordPress knows, like, you know, hey, probably want an image. An image, of course, is a, a very important block. So we just click on the image, and we've got the whole block ready to go. So there's three ways to get the image here, and one is to upload a file. Well, you saw I already had the files uploaded, so I don't really need to do it that way. If I wanted to, i just click on this, and then I'd locate here, here. This is an image file. I'd click on that, and I'd be done. Okay, Or I could use this over here. That is, if I knew a URL of an image on the web somewhere, I could do that. I don't recommend that for various reasons. So the one I'm going to use over here is just go to the media library, where we were a second ago. And I'm just going to click on this one over here, so which is the one I want. And again, I could put that alternative text right in here, okay? Uh, normally I would, but I'm saving some time. I'm not going to do that. Title of the image, that's not something you're going to see on the page, but you can give it a title. This is also good for accessibility. A caption, well, if you want to have some words underneath your image, you could do that. And description, you could do that. And that's enough. So I'm now going to insert this right over here. And it's now in our page. Very nice. This is Yellowstone National Park uh, for a tour that I was on. Okay, let's look at the toolbar first and see what's going on and what we can do. There's a lot of different things you can now do with the WordPress image block, but... Uh, it's not Photoshop, okay? This is not Illustrator or Photoshop. It's not like it, that. But there's a lot of things that we can do to manipulate the image for our web page. 
Uh, first of all, I'm not going to, well, if I click on this, I can convert this to a different kind of block. Well, I don't really need to do that, okay? So don't need to click on that. Let's go back to this over here. The next we're going to look at is the alignment and width icon over here. And I can see that, let me see, so it's aligned to the left. Well, it's hard to tell that. Now it's aligned to the center a little more, okay? If I click to the right, okay, I can see, yeah, it did move to there, all right? And full width, or wide width, aha! And the one that a lot of people like to use is the full width, so it bleeds to the edge, which is really nice. Let's go back to that first one and look at a line left. Actually, let's just do a line center. Okay, now what about the size of the image? What can you do about that? Well, there's a couple ways to size the image. One thing that's nice about WordPress today and Gutenberg is that you don't have to worry too much about the image size that you use to begin with. You know, how, how wide and high is it in pixel sizes? You know, a lot of this is gonna depend on your theme, but as I just said, one of the nice things is it doesn't really seem to matter because you can do a lot of manipulation now to make it look the way you want. Okay, and one thing I want to do, so I clicked on the image, and it has these little handlebars. Look at that. So I can resize the image. And you can notice that the aspect ratio was maintained so that the image was not distorted at all. Now here's where I can put in a caption, just in case you can put in some words and you can make it bold, italic, and you can even link something in the caption if you want. I, I'm not gonna do that, I just wanted to show you that there's a caption feature right there. So I'm gonna undo this, and how do you undo? Well, we still have this little button over here to undo it, and I just did, that's fine. I'm gonna now go over to this next tool over here. So this tool right over here is the link tool. So if you know how to do text links or any kind of links, and I cover that elsewhere, you'll know how to make your image into a link. It's a practice that's basically been abandoned using images for links. That's sort of gone now, but you can do that if you want. Now here's something that's really important, this little crop icon. So let's have a look at that. This is really kind of interesting. So. When you click on that crop, you actually get three tools in one, okay? It's kind of hard to know that, but you get the zoom tool, you get the aspect ratio tool, and you get the rotate tool. So let's just take a look first at the rotate tool. Now, why would you even need a rotate tool? This is what I'm talking about where, you know, the image is rotated. Whoops. I just did that with my mouse. Now, why would you even want to rotate an image? Well, Sometimes people upload images from their cell phones and the rotation of the image is incorrect. So it's pretty easy now to rotate it to the correct position. Part of this package that I was just mentioning is a zoom tool. So if you click on zoom, you can now zoom in and out to a specific area and you can move this around to a specific focal point. So that's really nice. Now, if you don't zoom, okay, let's just un unzoom, and you try to move it around, uh -uh, it's not gonna work. So be careful. If you wanna move something around, then use that zoom tool, and then you can move it around to a specific spot. Let's just do that over here. Eh, let's just do this like this. Okay, and then the last of the three is aspect ratio. So for example, let's just try this. Now, normally it's gonna give you the four by three, that is four, four by three, that's the width by height. And a, another very common aspect ratio is 16 by nine. So you can see, now I did that with my mouse, but you can see it changes that way. This is one that's gonna be a little different. So you can see, oh, you can just change the focal points and then I'm just moving this around by my mouse, just by grabbing it and moving it around. And that's fine. Now, you know, once you're done with whatever you want with these tools, you can either hit apply 
Or you can hit clear if you don't like it. And I'm going to hit clear because I really didn't like it. But it just shows you what you can do. Again, it's with this crop tool over here. And another option you have is to use something called Duotone. This is kind of neat. So if you want to add some interest of a different kind, okay, you want to put in some kind of like filtering effect, actually, you can do that. Let's just try another one here. It's kind of cool. Okay. And then if you didn't like it, so this is black and white, you can also... Well, let's just use let's, let's just use this one here. So you want to say, hey, I want to trade these are like gradients. I want to change this. Like, if I can, I move this. No, you can't move this. Don't try to move that. But you can click on it, and then take this little circle and then move it over to wherever you want. You can see you're adjusting things that way. And the same thing with here. You know, you can change this too if you want to do that. Okay, and also you can adjust the highlights and the shadows. So here's the shadows. Okay, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then the highlights, same thing here. If you want to change a, for a custom color, you can just click on this and you, can, you get the idea. Same thing with this. And then if you don't like any of this, and I don't like any of this, you could always hit this clear button right over here and you get restored to where you started from. So this is a really nice little tool called Duotone. All right, then to the right of that is one called Replace. All right, so what does that mean? Well, if you don't like this image, you can replace it. I'm gonna do that by going into my media library or uploading, either one, I could upload an image or I can go to my media library, but I don't wanna do it that way. I'm going to show you something that a lot of people don't even know that you can do. And that is right over here, I have an image on my desktop, and I can just drag it right into here. And that image has just been uploaded to my website, and I can now have the same tools that I can start doing anything I want. So that's great. So this is now in the media library. It can be used on other pages, and I'm all set to go. But I don't want this either, so... I go back to here. All right, so that really takes us through a lot of the toolbar options here. In fact, I think it takes us through all of them. But let me show you this over here, and that is the settings for the image block. So again, we are working with the image block, and I wanna change the style to something like this. Round, but you know, it's not really round, right? It's like cut off at the top and cut off at the bottom. And the reason why is because the image, in order for it to be nice and round, you need a square image, okay? So, you know, equal pixels on width and height. So we don't have that. So that is a problem, maybe? Mm, I don't know, we'll see. Let's go back to here and let's scroll down a little bit more. Okay, and again, here's another place you can put it in that alternative text. So that's probably a pretty important thing. I've just showed you three different places that, where you can put it. Now, as far as image size goes, we have a bunch of options here. Now, this is going to be determined by your theme. So some themes may give you lots of different sizes here that are preset. I don't even bother with it because there's so many ways to size images that I don't even know why I'm gonna bother with this. Like, could you do thumbnail? Okay, I get the idea. All right. And I'm back to large. And you can also size it by pixels over here. So you can see the image I, I'm using is, is 1024 by 768. I can also size my images like this. Okay. So lots of different ways to do this. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is show you something that will fix that problem with that circular image that wasn't circular. Remember I said you need to have the same size, okay, for the width and the height. In other words, something that's gonna be square. Now this might distort this a little bit. Let's just take a look. Yeah, that's okay. And I'm gonna go over here now I'm going to go back up to here, and now let's try this. Aha, much nicer. Okay, I'm even going to do this. All right, that's 
better. And then I'm also going to make this over. Let's see, that's fine. So you could imagine some text wrapping around here. And I have another video on that, how to get te text to wrap around something. And last, I can also do this. I can click on my crop. And now it looks like it's going to change some things, which might be a problem. But let's just see. I can zoom in on something. And then I can change maybe the aspect ratio. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to get what I want here. It doesn't look like it because, you know, I changed the aspect ratio. Instead of it being a square, it's now it's a rectangular. So let's say I don't like any of this, and I don't. So I'm going to just cancel out and just leave it like that. A lot of great image manipulation tools are now built into WordPress that will make your web pages a lot more engaging than they otherwise would be.